This is George Dion of the Rock is George podcast, and this is a KNAC.com exclusive interview with Zandria guitarist and founder, Marco Hubom. If I knew absolutely nothing about Zandria, how would you describe the band's music to me? All kinds of metal mixed with film score atmosphere, I would say. Yeah, absolutely, and I certainly hear that film score and that theatricalness in your upcoming album, The Wonders Still Awaiting, coming out on February 3rd through Napalm Records. It's been a little while since your last album. It's been five years, and that's kind of because uh, Zandria is in the middle of rebuilding. You have a new band behind you, a new singer. So how did you discover your new singer, Ombre? Uh, we, we were working on... Uh, on a on a different on another project together at that time and and uh, so I got to know her voice from that when I was starting to uh, be creative with with new song material for Xandria I was just yeah like counting one and one together you know what I mean it's just uh, it's from the other project I've seen how how great she sounds, how, how diverse her voice is, and that, that this is what I wanted for Xandria too. So this is how it came together then. Do you think that she brings a different dynamic than past vocalists, or does she more match up with the history of the band? Yeah, I mean, I don't really think that way. For me, it's just important that that it sounds good on what I had in mind for for the future, which is now the album back then it was the future but yeah i mean i understand that people of course they do comparisons and i think uh, for that you could say that that she can cover a lot of the things that has been done with uh, have been done with Sandra in the past so uh, for live shows this is of course a big big plus you also have a new backing band. Did you have auditions or were these people you knew in the business? Yeah, rather that it's, I was just um, talking to people I know if they know someone who knows someone, you know, that kind of thing. I didn't want to do any public search or anything. So, so we, I did not do any auditions or anything. I was just uh, contacting people that were very promising to me and asked them if they, uh, are up to to try it and if they have time for it and of course then after some time we we met and because it's very important that it works on a personal level of course um, which was a bit difficult in the beginning because we it all happened in lockdown time you know so we we did some uh, some skype zoom meetings uh, and had long talks and uh, got to know each other that way first and uh, it turned out that they are all really that I found pretty quickly. Actually, there were not many other candidates that that I have been talking to before. I, I was meeting the ones that are in the band now, and and that was was working out really well from the start. And when we all met together, it it was like like two hours in, you know, sitting sitting in a restaurant and having a nice dinner together and get to know each other. It was almost like we, we met a lot of times before. So that that's, that's, was a really good sign. The upcoming album, The Wonders Still Awaiting, is your eighth studio album. Is this a concept album? No, no. It's, it's not a concept album. It, it has a certain theme, a certain topic that, that quite some of the songs touch, which... Uh, turned out to be that way during the writing of the lyrics. So uh, so we also chose this to be a bit more present, like um, like when, when we talk about the topic of the album or the artwork or uh, the way we did the second video, for example. So you still have themes that are related to each other, uh, basically in the world that we're living in. Is that accurate? half of the songs that that have these kind of topics that uh, we just noticed how, how much we were affected by by the news in the last two three years 
like what was going on in the world uh, of course it's it's all a bit related <laughs> like like during the pandemic we we were seeing like how 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 crazy the world is if like 20 years ago we would we would have had a pandemic like this and and like before internet times you know <laughs> and and before the weirdest ideas were flying around in the world so everyone who just thought yeah of course we we have we have a, a disease like that going around and all we wish for is to finally have a vaccination that helps us against it and we also take the other precautions that are necessary um like in a in a movie back then like i don't know something like uh, i guess almost every one of us rewatched um outbreak with dustin hoffman again when it started <laughs> In a movie like that back then, no one would have thought that people would go crazy. Like half of, of now, nah, it's not that many, but but the people would go on the streets protesting against wearing masks or something. Like people would, would have seen it in a movie back then and they would have thought like, these people are crazy. They're all going to die. <laughs> you know, because of course in the movie, it would have been a much worse disease. Of course, like... Uh, hundred thousands of people died already because of that disease. But imagine it would be it would have been something that is much worse, you know, like Ebola or something. <laughs> so that would have been. I, I guess we would have solved have solved the problem quite quickly of, of people doubting that we need to do something. <laughs> but anyway, that's that's not really the main topic. It's just something that that was um, kind of enhancing sharpening the pictures of a lot of things that are going on in the world because um, these kind of ideas that were, that were coming up and the resentments against uh, science and facts they were picked up a lot by by authoritarian forces you know um, who use this kind of thing to 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 boost the uh, the way to power and uh, this is also something that is going on in, in a lot in, in in countries that we were thinking are democratic, open, pluralistic, you know, and then we have we have uh, those authoritarian um, forces like trying to to gain power. And I mean, you are in the U.S., right? You just you just had one for four years who, who tried to. In the end, even to the to destroy democracy. So this is something that is really dangerous. I guess we all have to be really aware of that. Also because those uh, the, these kind of, of movements they they don't they also don't care really about the, the problems that we face on our planet, like the uh, the climate catastrophe that is coming that we need to prevent. And even if that would not be happening, we would have a lot of problems um, saving our environment um, which which is necessary for survival on this planet already and uh, these kind of movements they don't care they're just just about going to power and uh, appeal to the low instincts and people like this this they think they need to protect themselves from from uh, from things they fear and they're afraid of so they become nationalist and, and racist and homophobic and this is all the things that we don't need in a modern civilization anymore actually it's it's completely unnecessary and as those things have become really a problem in the last few years like really really visible that uh, that this is even becoming a danger for civilizations in which we thought we are actually already a step ahead there um like we are not back in medieval times, so we we, we escaped that. So um, this is this was really worrying me and also uh, Omba. We are both because we are we were both writing lyrics for the album. It affected us when writing. One of your first singles was "Reborn," which seems more of an anthem for the band as the band has been reborn. What's kind of the story behind that song? Yeah, you're, you're right. This 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 one is uh, has nothing to do with with um, more universal topics that I was just talking about. This is uh, like the second single that was about that. Clearly, as we one could see in the video clip that we that we shot for it. But reborn, uh, you are completely right. This is uh, this is a reference to to the band coming back. In the lyrics itself, I was 
yeah, I was talking a little bit about my feelings there about it and things that I've also been through uh, in the meantime, like changes I needed to make to to be able to continue my musical vision. So this is uh, important for me to get that off my chest and uh, what was more fitting for coming back with exactly that song. And so that was a choice for the first singer. And as you describe the album tackling today's social issues, I would guess that You Will Never Be Our God has something to do with more of the power struggle between politics and the people. The actual lyric idea of the song um, is a bit narrower in topic than the video. Um, we we were generalizing it a little bit for the video because you you don't really shoot a video for each song of an album uh, so to to cover that that topic that we wanted to to talk about in, in quite a few of the songs we we were kind of uh, putting it all together and putting it in this video for that song even if the actual lyrics of the song are not covering everything you see in the video um, but the vibe is there the um, it's it's you could say it's the lyrics are one aspect of the story. It's it's one 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 brick in, in that big wall of of, of, uh, of things happening. I can tell you what, that the what the song is about. It's 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 um it's actually about the situation of women oppressed by um, regimes in which. Um, they have to behave in a certain way and within which they are like don't have the same rights as men um we see what's going on in iran right now that that uh, that the uh, people men and women together are rebelling against that and this this was exactly what i was thinking about in writing the, the lyrics it's it's from the perspective of um a person in in these kind of societies in which human rights are suppressed and for the video, uh, we were just taking the opportunity to to make it a bit more big and covering also some related topics. You brought in uh, Ralph Sheepers from Primal Fear. Are you and Ralph old friends or was this like a label thing? Neither, actually. Um, we did not know each other from before, although we played on a festival together one time, but, but we did not talk there because we were not really running into each other. But uh, I mean, a small festival, you know, where you could have actually uh, met not one of those big ones where hundreds of people are around and you you just uh, don't really get to know everyone, of course. It was more that we were looking for a certain kind of voice and he was immediately coming to our minds. So uh, I was just writing him an email and he was up for it after I sent him the song. He really loved it. So and then, then this way it happened. So it was not a label thing neither, you know. No one was telling us, okay, you, for marketing reasons, you got to do a duet or something. This is this is not something that we do. It's uh, it's just that we we heard um, a male voice in that song because it has a little bit of this '80s classic metal vibe, especially in the chorus. It even have has a riff that is a little bit. 80s accept style so uh, we thought like uh, that just needs to be a voice like that in there and Ralf is just one of the best super powerful metal classic metal voices uh, like for, with with the roughness in it also you know so something someone like like uh, Michael Kiske would have not been really right for that because he has a very clean voice and we wanted to have a more rough voice Another yeah. single you have out is The Wonder Still Awaiting, which is the album's title track, if you want to talk a little bit about the meaning behind that song. Interesting thing is, uh, we were first thinking about making Two Worlds, which is the first track on the album, the title track of the album. But we thought it's it, it would actually fit more the, the theme. Like, um, yeah, talking talking about the situation in the world, talking about society, and because we still have two worlds ahead of us that we can choose from. It's not too late, you know what I mean? We can go into a good direction um, and overcome um, 
forces that that want to destroy the progress of our civilization and uh, as an opposite even try to to make every people in the world free of being suppressed by by regi regimes and on the other hand try to to balance technology uh, economy and our uh, saving uh, preserving our environment and this is this is kind of a Uh, utopia idea, of course, and and it's not really sure if it's ever going to happen. But it's something that that mankind was was thinking about, like quite some time ago. If you think of of, of science fiction stories of the 50s or go going back more far to Jules Verne, where they had this idealistic dream of the future in which that is the case, everyone would be free and living in an actual good world. So this is one of the two worlds, and the other of the two worlds that you can imagine is going to some dystopian um, uh, environment, you know, setting, like for that that we will destroy our planet, like the environment we live in, and and also that our societies go backwards into Uh, regimes that that uh, suppress the human rights of people that uh, every country is becoming nationalist this kind of thing so this was a bit the concept to say okay we have these two worlds this is also what the song two worlds is about and i was first thinking of making it the title track of the album because it would have just been very fitting but i th i thought the one that's uh, still awaiting is a little bit more poetic And something that that sticks more to the mind, I think. You know what I mean? It's it's a bit more something that that you remember, and and uh, it also fits the topic because the wonders that are waiting, they wait in one of the two worlds. These wonders that we were thinking of as mankind back then, that we were dreaming of. I'm not talking about miracles here. It's it's a bit funny because in German we have one word. For wonders and miracles, it's Wunder in German. And some German journalists thought I was talking about kind of like religious miracles here, but <laughs> this is not the case. It's more about um, like the wonders of, of science, the wonders of technology, wonders of nature, the beauty of nature, you know, this this kind of thing to to balance that out. Absolutely. And I think the message that that goes through the entire album is, though, even though there's darkness, there's light at the end. And that's sort of what you're saying with kind of our world problems socially and then going forward that we can be this great utopia in the end. There's not always a light in the end. It's only if we do the right thing for it. You know what I mean? So it's, it's not it's not that kind of a naive promise. <laughs> it's more warning. The title is more warning than that, actually. It is half warning, half promise. And on this album, you guys kind of take symphonic metal to the next level, I think, uh, with the orchestral element and the, the choir. This has got to be something that kind of takes some work to put together as far as adding that to the album. Oh, thanks a lot. That, that, that means a lot that you are saying that. Yeah, I don't think necessarily it's sounding like even more symphonic than everything we did before. Maybe it does, even because we have a bigger choir and and uh, the guy I worked with uh, for the orchestral arrangements, he, he he's doing like big Hollywood movies, like film scores for them. So of course that that was having a big impact on on the vibe on the album. And uh, we have a children choir for the first time, and um, but I think this, these are, um, yeah, not substantial differences. I think I think that the album is a bit more complex somehow than our music was before, and uh, it has a little bit more layers, and is for sure much more diverse. Like I think that that a lot of the songs sound quite different from each other, which um, was very important for me that that you can just yeah, have a journey through different uh, musical expressions and different atmospheres that not everything sounds just the same because that would be boring. I think it's probably the most diverse album that we ever made. The album... The Wonder Still Awaiting comes in multiple formats, as small as just a 
two CD set to a plain yeah. vinyl to a blue and black marbled vinyl to a gigantic fan box set. Is this something that are these concepts that you put together? Is this something that you and the label work on together to present? Yeah, we, we were working on that together. Of course, uh, a record label is, is they are having their concepts that they want to do, that they do according to to what what people really love. So we we have been put a few ideas on on our table to to think about, and we um, we like the idea to to do that box that also has something to do with the topic of the album. Uh, have this this uh, seeds in there. I don't know what's the English word for it exactly. Those those uh, flower balls, I think it's called. So this is this is a little bit like like a symbol for for the hope and, and for what we should work for, as it's like a symbol for for our environment. And of course, uh, of course, uh, the, our collaboration with with the Eden Eden Reforestation Project that is. That we we give one euro as a band for each sold box. Um, that was quite important to do that. So we like that idea of of doing something that combines all of that and focuses on on the topic a, a little bit more. Even what we really liked was was the concept of having two CDs because the second CD is um, like the film score versions of the songs. It's it's called orchestral. But it's a little bit more than the orchestra because you also hear like the Celtic instruments on it. You hear the choir on it. So, so everything that is kind of the film score part of the songs is is uh, uh, in these versions of the songs. It's like the it's the same track list, just without the band, so to say. So you can really hear all the details and the arrangements, which is really worth. It's uh, it's amazing when I was. Getting the arrangements from from um, the orchestra arranger, I was I was always listening to them separately also, and I thought like this is like being in a movie because it sounds so much like a film score. Uh, so that that we and uh, that the details get a bit, little bit lost, of course, when you put all the metal on top. So um, we we did that second CD where everyone can really hear what's going on there. It's really nice. All right, Marco, I want to thank you for uh, coming on the podcast today. The new album is The Wonders Still Awaiting. It's out February 3rd on Napalm Records. The name of the band is Xandria.